In today's video, we're going to take this abandoned and neglected Cranbrook, breathe some life back into it, and then give it a motor. Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. A couple weeks ago while out on a ride, one of my subscribers pointed out this bike abandoned in a ditch. During the recording and editing process, I didn't even notice the bike, so he's got some eagle eyes. And thank you very much, because I've always wanted to do one of these salvage bike rebuilds. At the very least, I could just use it for parts. So we went back to investigate, and turns out it's an old Cranbrook. I think from about 2010, because that color scheme seems to match up with this bike. It's hard to age these things, and they're not super old or fancy bikes. There's nothing particularly special about the Cranbrook. They're just easy to build on and customize. And for the price of about $100 brand new, they can stand up to a considerable amount of abuse and neglect, as will become quite apparent throughout the video. Luckily, it looks like this bike has suffered more neglect than abuse, as it's not particularly beat up and the frame seems to be in decent condition. Now, I have the utmost respect for channels that do these full restoration projects. I neither have the time, skills, or patience to do one myself, but I'll give it my best shot. To be completely honest, I have been a little bit jealous when one of my subscribers or Discord members tells me about how they got a free bike in a junk pile, were able to fix it up, and turn it into a reliable daily driver. I posted it up on the community page to see if you guys wanted us to fully restore and repaint the bike or keep the salvage look. And the overwhelming majority of you like the patina, so we're going to go ahead and preserve what we can and prevent the rust from getting any worse, while also making sure that the bike is in safe and working condition. For my skill set and experience with bikes, this is about the perfect level of a restore project that I'm willing to undertake, as the bike is more dirty than damaged. And because I'm already so familiar with this frame, having built three motorized bikes on Cranbrooks that are all still functioning and in great working condition, this shouldn't be too bad. So while we're cleaning it up, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Cranbrook and why it's so iconic throughout the motorized bike community. For my fellow builders in the United States, there's a good chance that at some point you've at least heard the name Huffy Cranbrook. The bike has a relatively solid steel frame and stylish looks. Although the Cranbrook is not my first choice when recommending a bike to new builders, it's always been my failsafe. To put it simple, they're widely available, can withstand neglect and abuse within reason, and they're cheap. You know the old saying, buy cheap, buy twice. But this does not seem to apply to the Cranbrook. For the ever-fluctuating price of about $100, I've never felt like I wasted my time or money when pulling one off the rack. The same cannot be said about a lot of things in this hobby. Ironically enough, unless you live in an area with absolutely no hills, the Cranbrook is kind of a terrible bicycle. Which is why if you find one in the wild, there's a good chance it's not going to be beat to death. It's not uncommon for someone to buy a Cranbrook because it looks good, only to ride it once and park it forever after realizing how awful it is to try and pedal these beasts uphill. That's where we come in. Slap a motor on a Huffy, and you'll no longer be huffing. Although I have nothing to back this up with, I'm fairly confident that our little hobby has single-handedly helped keep the Cranbrook in demand for so long. So that's enough babbling for now, let's go ahead and continue with the restore process, and I'll jump in from time to time when I feel is necessary. Because budget is high in my mind on this restore project, to spend as little money as possible, I'm just using what I already have on hand. So I don't know if this is the right technique, but I'm using a Scotch Brite pad and some Super Clean to get the oxidized paint off the frame. Yeah. 
Although I'm happy with the paint on the frame and my ability to salvage what's left of it, the paint on this handlebar set is not looking too great. With these little rust spots peeking through, it just doesn't look very appealing, so I decided to go ahead and strip them down. Whether it's a style that complements the bike or an excuse to be lazy, my goal here is not to strip off every last bit of rust on this bike, only to get the excessive rust that might get a little carried away. To my surprise, the crank, headset, and rear wheel bearings on this bike were actually still in pretty good condition, so we just cleaned them and re-greased them. The only exception being the front wheel bearings, but that wheel wasn't even original to begin with, so there's no telling what it went through. This further hints at the fact that this bike was probably hardly ever used for anything. This is a Cracker Jack. It's nothing more than a vanilla Coke with one to two shots of Jack Daniels, depending on the mood. The rear wheel is in pretty rough shape. There's a bad bend in the rim, the spokes have some rust on the caps, and a lot of overspray from some paint job that this bike was sitting next to. I was fortunate enough that the paint is a bluish tint, so we might be able to get away with not getting every last bit of it off. That would just take way too much time that I'm willing to devote just to an old rim that might not even last anyways. We're going to true it, clean it, re-grease, and pack it. I've never actually had an issue with the coaster brake assembly on a Cranbrook. It's pretty robust and simple. I have once had the coaster brake arm strip out under hard emergency braking, which is why we have a spare rim if we need to use it. As an added bonus, coaster brake hubs are the only hubs that I feel confident using a clamp-on style adapter with. They generally won't slip, but even on a coaster brake hub, you might still need to key the hub. To protect what's left of the paint, preserve the patina, and prevent the rust from spreading, I decided to try and use boiled linseed oil for the first time. This is a technique I've seen rat rod guys use, or just people with older vehicles. It's a quick and easy solution that provides decent results. We'll see how well it holds up. An important safety note about boiled linseed oil is you need to dispose of the rags properly by rinsing them in water first and laying them flat to dry. This uh, can actually spontaneously combust if you just crumple it up and throw it in the trash. Oh, 
The bend in the rear rim was a little severe. I did my best to true it out and got some decent results, but it did mean that some of the spokes were a bit tighter than I like. We'll keep an eye on it and replace it if necessary, but for now she's running just fine. Because it seems appropriate, I'll be putting my original Firestorm Zeta 80 on this bike. It's once been rebuilt as well, and now has a 49mm cylinder. Because of the simplicity of a Cranbrook, I really shouldn't have been surprised that this turned out so well. The bike runs flawless, and you can barely tell that it's an old bike, only by looks. Maybe I was surprised simply because I've never done a full rebuild on a bike before, but it was definitely a lot of fun and very satisfying. I'll certainly be keeping an eye out for old bikes on the side of the road, and I might even go on scavenging adventures with other bikes just to find more. This is something I'd definitely like to continue to do in the future. Because my fleet of bicycles is pretty extensive and my storage is pretty limited, I'll probably eventually sell this bike after taking it on a couple adventure rides to make sure all the kinks and bugs are worked out. Besides the rear wheel, the only other thing on this bike I was kind of on the fence about replacing was the seat. If I put a brand new seat on it, it kind of wouldn't look in place, but this one's a bit tired and there's no telling how many more miles she has left in her. But although she looks tattered and beat up, once you sit on it, you can't tell. All the cushion's still there and Huffy uses fantastically comfortable stock seats, so we'll get at least a few hundred out of it before we're forced to replace it. I did think about possibly getting a strap of leather and re-wrapping it, but I'm not sure if I want to invest that in this bike right now. Leather is not cheap. If I do end up keeping this bike, the only alteration I think I'll make besides putting on a front brake is bending the handlebars into a more comfortable position for my style of riding. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little salvage project. It was a lot of fun. And until next time, ride safe.